wasn't that echidna the sweetest thing you've seen today? He was so cute. The echidna is one of our Australian native animals, so not to be confused with the porcupine or the hedgehog, but the echidna is super prickly. <laughs> cute, but a no-touch zone there. You don't pat that one. My name's Mel and you've reached me at Patchy Pony Stitcher and this is my episode number 24 of Floss Tube. So welcome. If you're new to my channel, it's a channel about cross stitch. And if you're returning, thank you for coming back and spending some time with me. I've got lots to share today. We've got some FFOs, some FOs, some whips, a giveaway, some Christmas presents. So let's get into it. First thing two FFOs. I know I haven't had an FFO in a long time so we've got two today. The first one I'm going to show you is the Farmhouse Christmas Little Red Barn. So I showed you this finished a little while ago and now I've got that ready for Christmas um, on that little slate cheese board that I showed you. So I've just mounted it on some sticky board and then attached some magnets so I can move it in and out of different uh, designs, little bow with a bit of hot glue and there she goes, she's ready. So really happy with how that one turned out. My little 99 cent bargain from the supermarket cheese board. So that is the first part of the a nine part series. So I've only done number one and more about that series coming up. My second FFO is Celtic Santa by Mill Hill. So I, this is where this one was before, so I'll show you the last time you saw it here. So I'd done a lot of the stitching and it sat there and it sat there because I had the beading. Wasn't too confident on how the beading would go. So over the last 10 days, I've had my mum down from Queensland visiting. So I didn't want to be sitting away in my stitchy chair. So I was sitting with her while she was stitching at the kitchen table it's like right time to get these beads out so I did all my beading and I actually enjoyed it I really didn't think it would be the thing that I don't know I just didn't think I'd like it but I really enjoyed it so I think I'm going to do a Mill Hill kit every Christmas as my own personal Christmas ornament for myself so this is how our, my Celtic Santa turned out isn't he adorable? He came out so well. So we've done the stitching, the beading. I put some felt on the back with a button and some thread. Oh. Button and thread to be able to hang him up. And the cutting out actually of the paper wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Really happy with how my Celtic Santa came out. So if you haven't tried one of these Mill Hill kits, do yourself a favour and try one. There's so many to choose from. I think my next one is going to be a gingerbread house in the glass dome, or in the snow globe, sorry. So that's my Celtic Santa, which takes pride of place on the Christmas tree. Even the boys, the teenage boys, thought I'd bought it because they was, and they were impressed with it. Really, really happy. So I'm passing the stash of the pattern on for that one. Now, my FO, that, that, oops, there goes the washing machine. The FO is my Welcome Spring by Little House Needleworks that Angie sent me. And this one is all finished. I finished this one off at the Mittagong Stitches Retreat in November. So that was a nice, simple stitch that I still made mistakes on because I was too busy yakking and chatting to be concentrating on, but really happy with how that one came out. Angie sent me the, um, the even weave to go with this one, so I'm not really sure what count it is or the make of that one, but it's using the Colourworks, classic Colourworks threads. So next video, or maybe the next one after that, it might, a bit closer to spring maybe, that one will be turned into a little pillow for my decorating. So that one I will pass the stash in on a later video. So if you like that one, 
keep an eye out for that guy because he'll be coming back and needing to find a new home. So whips, I have touched so many little bits and pieces, but there's one whip that I have been concentrating on and that is Oz by Ori TM. So this is the finished chart. This is what it looks like when it will be finished. Photo's not great quality because it's um, the chart printout isn't fantastic. This is where I was last time you saw it. And I don't think you've actually seen it fully outlaid for a little while. And you're not gonna see it fully outlaid today either because it's still in my Q-snap. So this one is all different Quaker motifs from The Wizard of Oz. And I must admit, last night I had to go back and watch The Wizard of Oz because there are a few things that I couldn't quite place on what they were. And one of them, believe it or not, was the rainbow. So I'll show you the rainbow because it is the sweetest little rainbow. So there, there's the rainbow there in its beautiful Quaker style. I couldn't remember, in my mind I'm going, I can't remember anything about a rainbow in the movie. And then Dorothy started singing somewhere over the rainbow. I'm like, duh. So <laughs> finally worked out what that was. Couldn't remember anything about the hot air balloon. So that was good that I rewatched that. And that was where the wizard flew off at the end. And he was meant to take Dorothy home. So we finished the water bucket, the rainbow, the tin man's hat, the hot air balloon, and nearly, nearly, nearly finished the scarecrow's hat and then I'm going to put a few little more crows through scattered throughout the chart because I did make a bit of a boo-boo and have a few little bit more vacant spots where I overcounted on the yellow brick road. So Cheryl McKinney from Tranquil Stitches is also stitching this along with me. We started this together and she put it out that we should finish it by the by the end of the year so I accepted the challenge because I really wanted to get it finished. So we've been stitching away together with that one. And I've just, I've been putting in 200 stitches um, a day on this one because of a challenge on the, um, what's it called? The, the Cross Stitches Journal and Daily Sale page, which is a group and, it, and we do have some challenges. And at the moment we do have a, a challenge every day. So it's good to sort of be focused and, and putting 200 stitches in. So this one, will be finished, um, not much to go at all on it. So I, I can't wait to show you the whole entire piece in its entirety when it's all fully outlaid. Oh, I will frame this one. I don't know whether I'll get it, I don't think I'll get it professionally framed because it's just for myself in my craft room. It will. So I might have an attempt if I can find the right size frame because it's actually a square. And you know what, square frames are hard to find, especially bigger ones. So I said to Cheryl when we get down to the last 20 stitches that we should hook up on Messenger, video Messenger, and pop the last stitches in together. So she was keen for that, and it'll be interesting to see them side by sides and their differences, just with the different um, fabrics and threads. Cheryl's used a lot more etoile than what I have. I've generally stuck to um, the called for. And I think I'm going to have to restitch this um, rainbow for a small or something because I just love it. It is just so cool. So I'll definitely be uh, redoing some of these little motifs for other other projects. So that is my Oz by Ori TM. It's hard to get chart guys. So if you do see them, snap them up because they don't come around all that often. So I'm what I'm going to do now is show you my Prairie Romance, which is my longer, sorry, my, my longer, I shouldn't say longest, my oldest whip. Um, this is my full coverage, so it's quite a biggie. Uh, so this is what it looked like last time you saw it. And I'm going to pop a video in for you of the update on it because I can't physically pick it up and show you because it's too big. So I'll pop it in here. So this is the progress on Prairie Romance and I have finished another column. It always looks nice and tidy to be able to show it when it's a column's finished. So this one is by Shea Sang Cross Stitch. Quite a bit to go. Still loving it though. 
The Prairie Romance Progress. So Prairie Romance is coming along well, really enjoying that still. And I got a bit of a hint from Teresa Craig, um, who's another Aussie stitcher that I met at Midagong on parking. And when you're beginning just the 10 squares, because I've always was working with my tip block of 10, I was working from the down from the park threads down to bottom and Teresa just suggested working from the bottom up within that 10 squares and it makes a huge difference because you're not trying to dodge other threads. So really happy with how um, my last few, I've probably only done oh, maybe four boxes of 10 since I got back from Mittagong. So probably get stuck into that um, as well now that I've pumped out a few FFOs and the Santa one's all done. So once I've done my challenge for the day, then I work on something a little bit different. How close are we to Christmas now? Today is Friday the 13th. If you're superstitious, I'm not, but only 12 days of Christmas, I have 12 days left of Christmas to go. And I've got a special gift for you. I've got actually, well, it's a special gift if you are one of my Australian or New Zealand viewers. The lovely ladies at Sassy Devils would like me to give away a Sassy pouch to one of my viewers. Now it will be the December one, which I unboxed in my last video. So if you wanna keep what's inside a surprise, don't go back and watch. But if you do wanna see what's inside the pouch, you can go back to my last video and it's in the second half of where I do my unboxing of the Sassy Pouch. Now being a Christmas themed pouch, you won't actually get it until after Christmas because I'm not gonna announce the winner until the 24th of December. So I will come back on the 24th and do like a three minute video because everybody's busy on Christmas Eve and pop in the winner. So some lucky person is gonna have a Christmas surprise on Christmas Eve and have a sassy pouch sent to them in the new year. Now, of course, there's a question. I want to know, have you ever been to Tasmania before? And if you have, what's your favorite place in Tassie that you visited? So the key word that I'll be looking for is Tasmania. So don't abbreviate it to Tassie. So make sure you write the full word Tasmania and you do have to be from um, Australia or from New Zealand. I'm sorry to my international viewers this time around. Um, however, if this pouch, these pouches that the girls send out are only, um, only go to Australia and New Zealand. So lots and lots of fun there. If you've looked at the sassy pouches before and haven't committed, this is a good, good way to have a look and see if, you, if it's something that you'd like. And it comes in a pretty pink pouch that will be sent out to you directly from the girls themselves. Okay, so what have we got next? We've got some stitchy mail. Now, I've got a friend and I'd like very much to call her my friend Natalie, um, who lives in the UK. She's a viewer and we've been writing back and forth with cards and little little gifts and so forth. And she sent me a Christmas card earlier during the week, which was lovely. And then the following day, I received a package from her with some Christmas gifts in it. And I haven't unwrapped them yet. So thank you, Natalie, you spoil me ever so much. So I received four beautiful packages. And you know what, I'm really tempted to put them under the tree because as a mum and a, have with a full-time working husband, I don't get surprises because I do all the Christmas shopping and I even do the shopping, the Christmas shopping for myself or I put an order in of what I want. So getting a surprise is very rare. So to get four little prezzies to put under the tree is just gorgeous. So thank you, Natalie, but I am gonna open one right now. So I'm gonna put three under the tree for, um, for Christmas day, and I'm gonna unwrap this square one. And I, oh, it's just so wonderful. Everyone loves receiving, re receiving surprises. So let's see what we have. How good are the Flossmas videos where the girls are doing the advent calendars? I am so doing that next year. I love advent calendars. Oh, looks like chocolate. Oh, no, it's a notepad of chocolate. Whoop, glare. 
That is so cute. Let me open that up so you can see it without the glare on it. Not Mills. Can't, not quite sure of the brand. Oh, that is so sweet. Actually looks like chocolate, doesn't it? But it's a notepad which will become in super handy for all my counting. So thank you, Natalie. And I can't wait to open the other three, but I will hold back and, and wait for Christmas day for some surprises there myself. Oh, and so I didn't miss out on real chocolate. There were a few year little goodies as well, which I've already had some. Okay, so what else have I received in the mail? So we had some very lovely, a lovely package from Tamara Bowen. She sent me a message and that Tamara is from This Nana Stitches. So I'll link her below. If you haven't seen her channel, go check her out. She's got some amazing things. And she sent me a message asking me um, that she had a Quaker chart and would I like it? And I'm like, yeah, I'm loving my Quakers at the moment. So she sent me more than one. She spoilt me rotten. This is my favourite. It's the Carriage House Sampling Quaker Quilts. That is so lovely. So I don't actually have any other Carriage House Samplings other than my Hawk Run Hollow. So very happy to get that one. We also got my big toe, <coughs> excuse me, my big toe Quaker Seasons, which is another lovely... Quaker, Spot on Flowers by Carolina House Designs. So beautiful charts. I was just so thrilled. And I, here I was just expecting one, one chart. And she also sent some fabric, some beautiful, it's called Mail Dives by Fibalicious. And it's a 18 count Ada, beautiful color. So thank you, Tamara. It's just, oh, you made me so happy. It's just, it's really nice. I just love this community. It's just amazing. And then I actually won some giveaways over the last couple of months as well. So from Carolyn Zook, from C Zook, her channel C Zook Stitches, I think. I'll link her channel below. I won the Beach from Cricket Collection. So now I've got three of these charts and it also came with the bead pack. So another whip for next year. I think I'm gonna have more, I should maybe do double mania because I've got too many whips that I wanna start. So that's Beach by the Cricut Collection. Okay, what else did I have? I had a lovely card. From, well, I actually had two lovely cards from viewers that have won my giveaways. So, and it's not, you don't need to send me anything if I send you a giveaway, but thank you, ladies. It's just, it warms my heart so much. So, Kate actually sent me one of these beautiful cards that have a chart on the back, and it is just beautiful with a lovely long message in it. So, thank you, Kate. And then another viewer, Linda, sent me this lovely card as well, but she's included this gorgeous little birdie chart. We're gonna stitch it together next year because she's got, she doubled up on this one. So hopefully she keeps in contact when she'll start hers. And that's also got some, like a, a little bead and charm pack in it. So I'm gonna be a busy girl with all these, all these charts for next year. So I need to get my manias from this year done. So I've got plenty of spots for next year. And then another lovely lady, the phone rang. <laughs> Why, yeah, it's always the way you, as other floss tubers know, as soon as you start making a video, you get texts, people ring you. I really should put my phone onto airline mode, but I've got my mum traveling back today from Hobart, back up to Queensland. So I sort of need to be available because there's pilot strikes right before Christmas, which is always handy. So where was I? I was telling you about these wonderful gifts that I'd received. So another viewer, I'm only going to say her first name because I haven't got permission to have her surname out on YouTube, but Robin 
sent me a lovely card. Well, actually, first of all, she sent me a message asking me after I'd done the FFO for the farmhouse Christmas, whether I had all the others. And I said, no, I, I don't actually. And she was, she offered them to me, which was so lovely. So she sent me a beautiful card. And she also sent me parts two, three, eight, five, and four of the farmhouse collection. So I've got number one, and then she sent me, I'll show you, so the red, little red truck, the horse one, the farmer, the quilt, and the cow. And then she said when she's finished with the other ones, she'll send those along to me. And I could either keep them or use them as a giveaway, but I'm gonna keep them. <laughs> I'm going to actually make them into a cushion. I saw somebody recently on Floss Tube do the four, uh, sorry, the four, the nine of them and then make them into a cushion. So now that um, I'll potentially have the whole set, I'm going to do do it all on one piece. So I will re-stitch the, the first one that I've turned into an FFO. So they, that was just amazing. So thank you, Robin, so much. And if that wasn't enough, she sent me a, a project bag that she had made. She's so naughty, but thank you, Robin. I love it. So she sent me this beautiful project bag that she had made herself as well. They are amazing. Like beautifully padded as well. And a Christmas one as at that. And also a notion and a smaller project bag as well, a notions bag to go with it. So matching set. So thank you, Robin. That was just such a lovely surprise. Just your generosity amazes me. Thank you so much. So looking forward to stitching those. So yet another, so I think I'll add that into my um, mania as just one piece, the farmhouse Christmas set, um, to go as one whole piece rather than nine individual starts for that one. Okay, so I've got some other great news and I'm sure most of your, the Australian viewers have already heard, but if you haven't, you know how much I enjoyed Meta Gong. There's gonna be another retreat in Victoria this time called Vic Stitches and that's going to be hosted by Laura and Carly. I'm going to link their channel below. So if you're remotely interested, if you thought about it, if you kicked yourself for not going to Mittagong, check their video out, register and get yourself sorted because it is going to be so much fun. It's going to be held in a place called Marupna, which is near Shepparton in Victoria. So it's not actually in Melbourne. It's about, I think about a two hour drive out of the Melbourne city. Beautiful little town, lots of things to do and see near Shepparton as well. Um, just come, it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be so much fun. This is the so this is the beginning of the retreats with the Mittagong one happening, Linen and Threads have got a, a, a casual one and now one in Victoria as well. So I'm gonna be there. I think one of the Sassy Devils is going. Um, Quite a few other floss tubers are gonna start talking about it. So check out the link below and register and come along because it is gonna be a blast. I had so much fun at Mittagong that a highlight, it was just a highlight. It was come, it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be so good. And it sounds like this Carly and uh, Laura have got heaps lined up. So check the video below. Okay, so what else have I got to talk to you about? Plans for 2020. Mania. <laughs> I've nearly finished Oz and I've nearly finished Hello Pumpkin. So with um, Welcome Spring and Celtic Santa, that's going to be four more holes. So I think I go down to about 27 whips. It would have been 26, but <laughs> that bumped back up to 27 because uh, Tash gifted me her fire and ice, which was the one I got from the Mittagong retreat, the partially done one. So I think I'm going to be sitting at 27, but I really want to bring that down a bit more. So I am probably going to do a whip parade come 
I don't know what you call it, cull out the ones that I re that I pick up and I'm like, no, I don't, I don't want to do that one because there's no point having those type of whips in my pile. Um, I'm not going to force myself to do them. I've got too many things that are just amazing. So I've got, and I've got a stack of, of new starts and beautiful new charts. So I'm going to be ruthless and I'm going to cull out the ones that I really don't care for. Even though I've put work and hours into them, if they're not if they're not singing to me, I'm sorry, but they're going. So I'll probably do that in January. I will go through and do a whip parade and show you every whip, what I'm keeping, and what I won't be keeping. And I've like three, I know, come to the top of my head straight away. So there's another couple of spots, but I am going to start a sell. The Spring and Bloom, one by Caterpillar Cross Stitch. That starts, I think, in January. Um, so that's a nice spring one with different flowers. So that one won't be waiting until um, Mania. That'll get started as soon as the Stitch Along starts. And that, again, is another mystery sale that um, they get a release a chart, a part of a chart every month and it adds and makes a big picture so I've done two of these mystery sales already I did Adventure Awaits finishing off Hello Pumpkin ready for Spring and Bloom so I'm really looking forward to that one Mania of course is on my horizon I would definitely be doing uh, Mania again really enjoyed that I love having lots of different things to choose from and now that we're coming to the end of the year I'm starting to feel like I'm getting quite a few finishes all happening at once, which is really nice because for a while I haven't had had any finishes at all. I did buy a big chart while I was at Mittagong to do. Um, I bought that. It's not actually a chart that's readily available uh, and it's an Australian Anzac chart. So that one I would really like to get started. It's um, quite a big one. I can't I can't remember how big it is, but it's full coverage, lots of white, lots of blue. Uh, so that one, I don't think I'll put that into my wheel of new starts. It will just become a new start because it's rather in a special piece that I would like to do. So that's sort of 2020 what I've got in my mind. What actually happens is another story. Okay, let's give, do the giveaways from last month. So I have got two winners from last month. The first one I have, um, the first one I have is orchids, which is this beautiful orchid chart. And that goes to Susie Stitches. So Susie, if you could reach out to me with your uh, postal address, I can pop that in the post for you. I won't fold this one because it is actually a, th um, a thicker, it's a four page, so it's like a four page chart. So I'm not gonna fold that one up. That one will come to you in a A4 envelope. And the other one that's going out is Winter, which is this lovely one. And this is going to Tamara Bowen. I was so excited, Tamara, when I saw your name come up on the random um, word picker. So I'll be sending that one out to you. You don't need to reach out to me because I've already got your address. So I will pop that in the post for you very shortly this week. I don't know if you'll get it before Christmas with the, with the postal systems away at crazy, crazy time of the year. So it may take a little while to get to you, but it will definitely be on its way. So you you may you'll definitely have it for uh, autumn. Well, you'll get it, I guess, not long in the new year. But if you want to get that ready for your winter, so that's it for 2019. I am going to come back to you briefly on Christmas Eve to announce the winner of for the the big giveaway. So if you didn't see that, you'll have to go back through the rest of my video and find the giveaway that I've got for the Aussies and the New Zealanders. So good luck, guys. It's definitely worth commenting and getting your entry in for that drawing because it's a fantastic prize. So I'm going to come back to you on Christmas Eve, but if I don't happen to see you before then, 
I hope you all have a fantastic Christmas. I hope there's lots of stitching in the festive season for you and some stitchy treats under the tree. Wouldn't that be fantastic? I've got three. Or do I open one more now? Oh, I'm gonna open one more. See, I told you, Natalia, that I'm terrible at that. They may not wait, they may not make it to Christmas. So let's have a look what this one is. We all love presents. Oh, it's a little kit of a beautiful little robin red breast and it's fully kitted. That is gorgeous. Thank you, Natalie. He'll make a perfect Christmas card. So thank you very much. So guys, until I see you on the 24th of December, happy stitching and I'll see you soon. Bye.